Hey everyone, John Carey here to demonstrate a little known Git feature I really wish more people knew about. And that feature is git add patch mode. Now I know you're familiar with git add, the command that takes an entire file and adds it to the staging area, allowing it to be part of your next commit. But patch mode is a way to stage only parts of a changed file instead of the entire thing. So let's say you've made two distinct changes to a file. It comes time to commit those changes, but they aren't related to each other at all. For example, you added some new functionality near the top of the file and also made a small formatting change to some unrelated code near the bottom. Let's say you're in a hurry and just commit the file right away, git add myfile.txt. Then you use git commit and give it a commit message about what you changed. So you push the new functionality out to production. Until later your boss calls and that new feature is causing some major problems and needs to be removed right away. You use the command git revert to undo your changes but one of your commits has code for this new feature and also contains some unrelated syntax changes. So you end up undoing both the new feature and the syntax change because they're part of the same commit. You want those syntax changes to stay in the code base, but we can't do much about it since you were in a hurry and stuffed them in the same commit. If only you had known about and taken the time to use git adds patch mode, you could have staged and committed those two change sets in separate commits. So later, if and when the time comes to revert one, you didn't also have to revert the other. So not only does this extra effort allow us to correctly revert changes, it also gives us a cleaner, much more readable commit history. So patch mode, let's get down to it. So if we look at my current working directory, I've got one change, or well, I've got several changes in this one file. Uh, we'll be working with this bash profile file here today. So let's go ahead and show you what has changed about this file. So we did git diff, which will show us all of the changes for all of the files that are currently being tracked by git. So uh, up here I've got a, a different file that I'm including along with a new environment variable. Uh, later down here I'm adjusting some of my path stuff, some more of my environment variables, more path stuff, uh, defining an additional alias down here, um, removing some other comments and aliases before setting some other functionality down there at the bottom. And this change down here is to a submodule uh, that I'm using, and don't worry too much about that. So let's drop into patch mode here. Git add patch mode will start out by cycling through all of the hunks that are in our code. And a hunk is just a, an intelligently derived block of code that Git thinks is related to one another. Well, I guess they're not necessarily related to one another, and that's what we're going to determined by building our commit. So in this case the first hunk that git sees is the first change that's in my file. And git will go through and it will split out your hunks based on white space. So because I had white space between this set of changes and the next, git sees it as a different hunk. So you'll see that we have here at the bottom a list of different commands that we can start using. But if you enter the question mark and hit enter, you can quickly see what all the different commands do. So at the very top we've got Y, which you could stage the current hunk, and this would take the current hunk that's on screen, e.g. these two green lines right here, and add that to the staging area, or the index, or wh whatever your terminology is that you use to refer to the, if I do git commit, this stuff is going to get committed to the repository. Or you could say N to just not stage this hunk and proceed to the next one. You could use Q to quit completely out of patch mode and jump right back to your uh, terminal. So then we've got A, which will add all of the rest of the hunks that are in the single file that we're already in. And let's say that in our case here, we brought up our current file and we hit A and hit enter. It would stage our current hunk and every single hunk after that. So it would stage the, well, the rest of the file. Uh, this is great if Git is cycling through all of the hunks that are ready to be staged and uh, you know that all the rest of the hunks need to be staged in the file. You're just like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what file I'm in here. I'll just hit A and st stage the rest of the hunks. Yeah, cool. Uh, you can use D to basically do the opposite of A and that would be do not stage the rest of the files that or the rest of the hunks that are in this file and it will just kick you out to the next one. Uh, the next important one that's on the list would be S for split. So if Git brings up a list of hunks that uh, you want to split into two hunks, it allows you to do that really quickly. Uh, we'll talk
talk about E or editing hunks in a different video because it's really tricky and not obvious at all. And I think there's only one person I've ever known in that Travis Swicegood that has successfully edited a hunk. So let's jump back in. I have uh, an alias set up in my shell for patch mode that just uses GAP and that just does git add P. So that's because I use it so often. So I do git add patch. And let's say that we want to stage this hunk about our bash profile or about our uh, git prompt here. So we'll say Y to stage that hunk. And we don't want to stage anything else in the file because we know that that's the only piece of functionality we want to use right now. We could enter D to jump out of it, but let's keep proceeding through the rest of the file. So we'll enter N. We don't want to stage any of this stuff. And we don't want to stage that. And we don't want to stage that. And we certainly don't want to stage our submodule stuff. So we'll just jump completely out of it. So if we do get add stat get status again you'll see that we now have changes up here in our staging area and we still have changes that are unstaged down here so if we do git diff cached will show us the changes that are in our staging area and you'll see it only has our little bit of functionality here so we can do, go ahead and do git commit and pass out a message of uh, So then we have that committed. Now we'll jump back into our patch mode. And here's a place where we could use S to split our hunks into several. So you'll see we basically have three different change sets here. We've got one up here where we're removing um, an export on the path. We have some here relative to some Oracle stuff. And we have some additional changes here to our path. Let's use split to split our hunk into several pieces here. So if we say S, Git tells us that it has split into three hunks. So that change that it just showed us, it's split into three. And now it shows us the first one. And now we can stage these individually. So Git will proceed through all three of them. So in this case, we want to say, yeah, okay, we'll stage this one. And we know right now that we don't necessarily want to proceed in, through the rest of all of our changes. We know that we want to jump out and just commit this right now. So let's enter Q and jump out of patch mode right back to our terminal. Let's commit this newest change. Okay, that was easy. Let's jump back into patch mode again. Let's go on to our next change. And you'll see now that that same hunk is brought up, but our previous one that we already committed is gone. Uh, again, let's split this out into separate hunks. And let's stage our Oracle removal, jump out and commit again. And now we're back down to our uh, next path change. Again, we want to get that in there. And one more that will add to the commit. And this is that big hunk at the end. And we'll save that for the next video on editing because if we tried to split this into two hunks, we could. Um, you'll see that get split it based on that white space there, but it can't automatically split it anymore. It just sees that this change up here is right next to this change. So it thinks that they're relative to each other, but in fact they're not. So we would have to use patch modes edit functionality and that's a little more complex and I will uh, cover it in the next video. So click here to jump to the patch video on edit mode and I'll see you there.